welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. I'm gonna do some IKEA hacks today. It's been a long time because during the you know what, it was really hard to get to IKEA and when I did go to IKEA, they had very little in stock. But a few weeks ago, I realized that my house is essentially an IKEA store of its own. I have loads of supplies for IKEA hack projects that I've just never done. So I've actually got enough for quite a few videos. <laughs> so today is going to be the first in a set of IKEA hacks. So without further ado, <laughs> let's jump in and uh, we'll start with the first project, which is this really simple solution for a headboard, especially if you're renting because you can put this up with command hooks. So let's get into it. So I'm going to take two of these small IKEA rugs, they're fairly inexpensive and you can do so much with them. The first thing I attempted to do was iron out all the creases and I'll be honest I did this for quite a while and they're very tough to get out so I didn't do a brilliant job but I tried my best. Don't be discouraged if you can't get them out perfectly, this is what I ended up with but it, it looked fine in the end. So I'm just folding it down the middle and I'm going to sew along two sides leaving one of them open. I'm using a simple running stitch with a needle and thread. If you don't know how to sew, you could use fabric glue for this, seeing as these won't be thrown around a lot, they're not gonna come undone as they'll be on the wall. But sewing is always my first choice. So with two of the sides closed up, I had one side open to pop in an old pillow. Now this is one of the pillows I had lying around the house that was so thin and flimsy, I don't even want to put it on the guest bed, it was horrible, so I was like, I need to find a way to reuse these. <laughs> you can use any pillow or stuff this with stuffing, but uh, this is the simplest way. And I did two of these and this is what they look like. Now to hang these up we're going to want to make four straps. I'm using faux leather to create these. If you have four of the same belt happen to be lying around, you could use belts for this project. If I'm going to show you how to make these, they're very simple. I'm taking my ruler and I'm measuring a two inch wide strap and I'm cutting that out with fabric scissors. The reason these are two inches wide is because the D-links I'm going to use to hold them up are also two inches wide. So I just wrapped that round to make sure it was going to be long enough and pulled it over the top like so. As you can see with faux leather, it's got this really ugly looking interior. So I'm going to fold the straps over at the back and the front so you can't see this anymore. And this is how I'm going to attach the D-link by putting it through the strap at the front, folding it down and then sewing it into place. So let's put that into action. I'm taking hot glue to fold the straps over to cover up the inside. This works really well with this side of the fabric, but hot glue does not work on the faux leather plasticky side. So please don't use it to hold your whole piece together. It will fall apart. It's then time to take my D-link, thread it through that front piece and place it down. I'm gluing the back of this piece as well to make sure that it's not flopping about. And then um, once that's done, I trimmed off all of the little excess pieces to make sure it was nice and tidy on the side. I then took a needle and some brown thread and went to work sewing the two pieces together. This doesn't have to be perfect, so if you're not brilliant at sewing, don't worry about it too much. You just want to do a very short line to make sure that you can hold them together. You won't see it even if you get very close up. See, mine isn't perfect, but it does the job. Once you've completed all four, you can install your faux headboard onto the wall using command hooks, screws, or whatever works best for your space. This is how mine turned out. really fun and actually very very simple to make so if you don't want to fork out for a traditional headboard or you can't fit one to your bed for some reason maybe you can try doing that hack anyway moving on to the next set of hacks I've got three more projects to show you but they all have one item in common which is the frack mirror now I picked this up because I wanted to make a double mirror project so I got two but then I ended up having lots of parts left over so I'm going to use these parts in a few other projects that you'll see throughout the rest of this video so let's get into the mirror first and we'll see where we are <laughs> This 
this is how the frac mirror looks when you take it out of the box. We want to take this little piece off the side, so all I'm doing is using some jewellery pliers here to unscrew the bolts that are holding it together. Do this twice and you should have two mirrors that look something like this. And we're gonna take one of these Ikea baskets, they're very inexpensive, and we're gonna put the mirrors into the basket. I can't quite believe how perfectly they fit, but we do need to make a little base for them to rest on in the bottom. So I'm taking a piece of wood, this is about an inch thick, and I just cut it with a saw, and here's what happened. I'm gonna cut another piece because it's a little bit too thin, but I think I'm gonna actually stack it that way and then lie the mirrors on top. Just one more. I switched to my junior hacksaw because it's actually a lot better. God bless Poundland. I gotta say this little saw from Poundland has done me well over the years, I love it. Anyway, once you've got your two pieces, you can line them up like so and place your basket on a piece of paper or something so you don't get glue all over the place. I'm using some wood glue and attaching both of the blocks together and then I'm going to do the same thing by adding wood glue to the base and attaching it to the basket. Once that was down, I pressed it in place and I let it dry for a few hours. Once dry, it's time to attach the mirrors and to do this, I'm using super glue because I know it's gonna hold the metal onto the wood quite nicely. I just applied a little bit to the middle piece of wood and the edge of the basket, plonked my mirrors down and let them rest for a few hours. Once my piece was dry, I was able to hang it up on the wall and this is how it turned out. This was a really fun little project and it was a fun way to play with the cane wicker basket trend and circle mirrors. It was easy to do and uh, yeah, I enjoyed this one. So that's how the mirror turned out and I guess it's a little twist on the woven cane trend at the moment. Now, onto those extra pieces. Let me show you what I'm gonna do with them. For this next project, I'm gonna talk you through it because there's not much DIY footage because it's literally so simple. So I had left over these extending brackets that you fit to the wall and I was wondering if I could try and make a sconce style light situation with them because I definitely don't want to be hardwiring anything into my wall ever. I feel like getting electrocuted is absolutely something that might happen to me if I do that. So I wanted a plug-in solution for the side of the bed. So I've installed these into the wall. However, I'm actually moving this room around a lot to see what layout I like with it. Uh, so I didn't want them to be permanent straight away. I recommend, especially if you have small children, to properly screw these into the wall, but I did use Velcro command strips. I put two on the back of each of these fixtures and stuck them to the wall and I'm actually very surprised that they held very well. So if you're in a rental and like I said, you don't have children who are gonna be pulling on them, I think you could get away with Velcroing these up. Or if like me, you wanna move stuff around so you're not really sure of the final layout. You could definitely get away with it. It was very strong of a hold, I was quite surprised. But anyway, I stuck these onto the wall and then I used a Strala light cable and threaded that through the end of the fixture. I then used an E27 to E14 adapter because I wanted to plug in these large light bulbs and the Strala cable is an E14 for some reason. So I used an adapter, screwed the light bulb in and then let it hang from the wall. And I'm actually very impressed with how this turned out. It was so easy to do very simple and solves the hardwiring issue that I don't wanna to have to deal with. Let me know if you're gonna try this, but like I said, I do recommend screwing it into the wall if you can, but yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the last project, which actually I think might be my favorite from this whole video. These leftover pieces from the mirror are kind of interesting and I think I could make some kind of mobile from them if I attach them like this. I'm gonna super glue them one on top of the other so that they don't move and get tangled. 
And then when it's dry, I'm gonna spray paint it and we'll see what we can attach to the bottom. I'm gonna hold this for like half an hour at this rate. Okay, we can cut the camera and come back when it's dry. <laughs> Once the super glue had dried, I took it outside and spray painted. I went for this black gunmetal colour, but I decided I didn't like it, so in the end I switched for a gold once it was dry, which was the best decision I made because I think the gold really ties this piece together. I'm going to be using all these little bits to create the mobile. I've got some faux craft crystals, some of these little mirror stars, I think they were from Wish, and these little mirror pieces which were from The Range. For the crystals, I'm tying them together using some wire. Be careful when doing this in case the wire scratches you, but I'm just wrapping it around about three or four times and then twisting the end of the wire into itself so it's not going to scratch anyone while it's hanging up. To piece all of the mobile pieces together, I'm using nylon string and I'm tying all of the crystals on and uh, this is actually surprisingly heavy duty so it works perfectly. To add all the mirror pieces, I used some hot glue and sandwiched them together making sure that the nylon string was in the middle, submerged in the glue so it wasn't going to go anywhere. I spaced these all slightly different widths apart and made them kind of a little bit random looking. I put about four or five on each piece of string and then I simply tied it through the holes that are already on the metal piece that we put together earlier. I really, really love how this turned out because it's so pretty and the way it catches the light is so beautiful when the light shines through. I love this and I think I'm gonna put this one in my bedroom. So with that, that is everything for today's video. Those are all the IKEA hacks. I've actually got enough pieces for a second IKEA hack video. So let me know if you'd like to see it by commenting down below, but I'm not gonna lie to you, I might have already started filming it. So you'll probably see it anyway. Um, but with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great week. Happy hacking and I'll see you next time. Bye.